Hi everyone, my name is Wei Zhan. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about our prediction challenge based on interaction data set we constructed. So this prediction challenge was co-organized by me as well as my colleague Li Tingsun and my advisor, Professor Tommy Zuka. So before talking about this uh, challenge, first let me talk a little bit about our data set. So the interaction data set is an international adversarial and cooperative motion data set. So there are several highlighted features of this data set, including international locations, diversified driving scenarios, multiple views of data collection, completeness of the information for the surrounding entities of the predicted agents, as well as highly accurate trajectories and highly complex behavior, very critical situations, as well as HD map with full semantics provided. And this is a drawing work from our lab, the mechanical system control lab of UC Berkeley, as well as uh, our collaborators from Mainz Paris Tech and Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. So first, uh, let me talk about the features of this data set. So we have very diversified scenarios, such as merging or lane change, roundabout with yielding a stop signs, unsignalized intersections such as all-wheel two-way stops, and signalized intersections with unprotected left turns. We have international locations to collect the data from the US, Germany, China, and other countries. We have multiple views to collect data from drones and traffic cameras. And we also provide the HD map with full semantics with an open source format called LinLab2. So it provides not only the physical layer such as where are the curb stones, lane markings, stop lines, as well as the semantics which, was, which would be required by the prediction and planning modules, such as how the lane pieces are connected on road or at the junctions of intersections or roundabouts and some dedicated lane, whether it's a left turn or right turn only, and whether the lane is controlled by the traffic light or stop signs and which, as well as the traffic rules, such as first stop, first go for the always stop intersections. And we also provide highly accurate trajectories recovered from the raw videos, which are shown from these uh, videos. And you can also find some crazy behaviors of the drivers there, as well as the negotiation cases at the roundabout. So the most highlighted feature of this data set is the densely complex and critical behavior of the vehicles. So actually uh, you can see that in this emerging scenario, two vehicles here were competing with each other to see who's gonna go first. And after like over 20 seconds, there's a winner finally, even if there is a very explicit right of way to say who's gonna go first as a zipper merging. And there are also several cases shown here as the near collision cases, which are highly critical and can rarely be seen in other kinds of motion data sets. And we also provided like many complex scenarios such as this seven way roundabout with vehicles negotiating with each other to see who's gonna go first. And such kind of negotiation also happens many times because the vehicles entering the roundabout has to violate the traffic rule a little bit to, uh, to avoid waiting for several minutes. And here is also a very busy intersection with vehicles like inching forward because there's no traffic light here and all the lanes are controlled by the stop signs. And we also have an unsignalized T intersection here where the vehicles may reverse and change its mind from going to one of the branches into another branch which is kind of chaotic for this uh, traffic management. And with all those kinds of complex and critical behavior, 
a question may be raised, which is how to measure how interactive the data set is. So in our paper, we define a metric, a rule-based metric, which is the difference of minimum time to collision point to measure the density of the interaction. And we use that to compare with several existing data sets, such as Heidi data set or NGSIM data set. And the results showed that our data set are much denser in terms of interaction and with much more highly critical behavior inside. And now we have released the 1.1 version of this data set, including 11 scenarios in four countries. And the total length is around 1,000 minutes with nearly 40K vehicle trajectories, as well as uh, 2,000 pedestrian and cyclist trajectories. And uh, actually, there are, for the release data, we can split that into the training and test set for our challenge. So if you're interested in the data set, please visit our website here so that you can make a request or see more details of this data. And now we have received hundreds of requests for using our data sets for many kinds of application purposes related to behavior research, such as how to predict the motion or intention or behavior of the vehicles or pedestrian, how to conduct imitation learning or behavior cloning, how to generate social behavior with courtesy or how to model or analyze behavior of the traffic, how to test the decision-making or motion planning modules in simulation using our map of the scenarios as well as the motion we provided and how to generate driving scenarios or driving behaviors in simulation to test. And a very interesting thing is how to extract or label the events or behavior of the like vehicles and how to conduct representation learning to see when, how, and whether a pair of vehicle are interacting with each other. So here is a brief introduction of the data set and now let's switch to the interpret challenge. So this challenge has been officially accepted as a NeuroIPS 2020 competition. And there are two major stages of this challenge. For the preliminary stage, uh, we announced that at early March and received many submissions at the, uh, by uh, June 11th as the deadline. So two of them are selected as the winners and the approach of them will be soon presented after my presentation. So uh, for the formal stage, we are very excited to announce here to be the start or say the beginning of this. So we will have the submission deadline at the end of October and evaluate them to announce the winner as well as uh, green methods during the conference of NeurIPS on December. So if you're interested in this participating in this challenge, please visit our website to make a request, see more details and receive all these uh, tests and uh, training data and see the leaderboard there. So for the preliminary challenge we are gonna present in this workshop, uh, we only have the regular track, which means that the models are trained with large amounts of data we provided and tested with the data from the same scenarios with, and measured by some traditional metrics. So first, let me talk about this regular track. Here are all the scenarios we provided for the release data that the participants can receive. You can see many kinds of road structures of the roundabouts, as well as the unsignalized intersections, two-way stop, always stop, and here like one-way stop there. And you can also find the lane change scenario and run merging on the highway, as well as zebra merging in ur uh, for urban roads. And around 20% of the data we prepare for the regular track was retained as the test set. And we also provide a tool for the users to generate the to split the training and validation set 
and generate the segments for the training. So the task for the record track is quite straightforward. Uh, the input is like a one second historical motion of all the, all the objects in the scene. And we, we require the prediction model to output three seconds of future motions for predicted agents. In terms of the numbers of the test cases of this regular track, we have around 10K cases for each category of the scenarios, such as roundabout, unsignalized intersections, or merging and lane change. And the total number is over 30K for the test cases. And the evaluation metrics we are using are the most widely accepted metrics in the research community, such as average distance error, mean final distance error, as well as the minimum over n. And for the methods submitted to our leaderboard, we are quite excited to see various models incorporating the most state-of-the-art, like graph, graph neural network, recurrent neural network, generative adversarial net, convolutional neural network, mixture density network, etc. And there are multiple state-of-the-art semi-supervised learning or supervised learning methods submitted and some imitation learning models as well. And we also, we're also very happy to see like some newly proposed methods which are still in submission to some top conferences such as NeurIDIS submitted on our leaderboard. But it may be a like pity that they cannot present the details of their methods. And we also received different kinds of methods such as probabilistic prediction as well as deterministic prediction. And we can evaluate them like in, we, are, we can evaluate them, all of them on our leaderboard. And we, are, we can also see designed features or generated images as the inputs of different models for like image-based models as well as other kinds of models. And here is a screenshot for the leaderboard of the first four methods for the regular track. And that's how we determine the first two teams to present as the winners. So the number one team uses, combines the, gen, uh, the graph neural network as well as the current neural network to achieve the best performance in terms of the FDE. And this team also provided a method which is LSTM based to achieve the best performance in terms of the ADE. And the number two team constructed the GRU plus uh, deep, deep residual network as well as mixture density network based model and generated some image based inputs for his model. And it can achieve the best performance in terms of the minimum over N because it's uh, like uh, probabilistic prediction method. And soon there will be like two presentations afterwards for this two team and congratulations. So the leaderboard right now is still open and you can try to submit your like results based on your algorithm to see how the performance would be. And for the, uh, for the formal stage starting from today, we will include not only the regular track but also three more like tracks, which is like which is like newly proposed. First is the generalizability track. We want to test how the how the algorithm would perform with the data from totally different scenarios of the training data, with the, some new metrics proposed. And we also have a fatality aware test track to test how the proposed prediction model would generate some false alarm or misdetection and whether and how much it would deviate from the ground truth criticality. And finally, we will also have a closed loop track, which will test the consequence of, for the uh, planning and prediction modules, uh, for the planning modules by adopting the results of the predictor with decision-making and planning algorithms in the loop. So that will like compose the whole, uh, the other tracks of this formal stage. And finally, we want to thank our sponsors,
Gravity, who provide us the infrastructure and data set management solutions, as well as the model evaluation. And we also would like to thank AWS to provide us the credit for the challenge winners. And we also want to thank Yuning and Henrik and all the other workshop organizers for your great efforts and providing us this slot to present the work. And right now we are also look, looking for more sponsors for our Neural Apes 2020 competition. So here are the two links to our challenge and data set. And if you are interested in, in the participation or request the data, please visit the two link. And if you are interested in being a sponsor, please contact me and Li Ting for more details. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. I'm Xiao Songjia from Shanghai Jiao Tong University. It's my pleasure to share my winner solution on the interaction data set based prediction challenge. First, let's start with the background. Behavior prediction is one of the most challenging problems blocking the realization of full autonomy. The interaction data set contains large amounts of highly interactive motions of road users in a variety of driving scenarios from different countries. In this challenge, we do trajectory prediction with interaction data set. The data is sampled 0.1 second per frame, and we use agents and their neighbors' data in 10 frames as the input, and we predict agents' trajectory in the future 30 frames. Then, let me introduce our data preprocessing method. When preprocessing data, some prior knowledge about trajectory data could be used so that the input space could be more concise and the learning process could be easier. The first insight is that we need to learn the moving pattern of agents, and the absolute position is meaningless. So, we replace the absolute coordinate in the raw data with relative coordinate. Specifically, we let the vehicle's target vehicle's position as the first time step be origin so that the model could focus on the relative movement. Similarly, the absolute orientation is meaningless as well because we need the model to learn the trajectory pattern instead of those information about the absolute position and orientation. We want to learn those curves. So we use random rotation data augmentation method. Specifically, at each training step, we augment the data by randomly rotating the coordinate system. Assume X and Y are the coordinate raw data of entities. Then we randomly rotate them and we got X prime and Y prime as shown here. And we feed the X prime and Y prime into the model instead of the raw data. By augmenting data in this way, the model could be rotation invariant and could have better generalization ability. Then, if we use random rotation augmentation, the standard zero-score normalization would be invalid since X and Y has different scale factors, as we can see from the ro rotation equation. If X and Y are in different scale, the rotation e equation would be wrong. So, we propose to use the sm same scale factor for X and Y and we propose our normalization method. Take x for an example. We need the expectation of x, x prime to be zero and the variance of x prime to be one. We can find directly that the expectation of x prime has already been zero, since as we can see here, this term contains cosine theta and this term contains sine theta where theta is sampled uniformly from 0 to 2 pi. As a result, both this term and this term expectations are 0. As a result, ex prime is 0 or 
as well. As for the variance of x prime, we can derive that it equals to this one about x and y, and then we can divide all the x by the square root of variance of x prime, so that we can make the variance of x prime to be one. <clears throat> Similarly, we can apply this scale factor equation to y. Further, as we can see here, the scale factor equation is symmetric for x and y, which means we use the same scale factor for x and y. Additionally, note that we use the same scale factor for the label as well to stabilize the output of the, of the model. As, as for features, we use three orders of coordinate, including x, y, velocity x, velocity y, acceleration x, and acceleration y. We also use vehicles radius and length as features, and we use zero score normalization since we do not rotate them. As for, we also use the per se feature, since per se is a angle and we use psi and cosine to encode the angle information. Since it, they are already within minus one to one, we do not do any further normalization. Next, let me introduce our GNN plus RNN method. We use graph neural network to utilize the information of target vehicle's neighbors, and we use the recurrent neural network to utilize the temporal information. The reason why we use GNN is that we want the model could handle the situation that the size of agent's neighborhood could vary, and we also want to make the model to share the per same set of parameters even if the size of neighborhood is different. So we use the GNN. Specifically, at each time step, we run GNN and output the node embeddings of the agent. Then we feed these 10 embeddings from 10 time steps into a LSTM and then MLP to output the prediction results. As for more details, we build the graph with each entity as a node and their features as node features. And the node features of each entity are pre-processed as mentioned before. Note that for pedestrian and bicycle type, we use zero to pad for radius, length, and per se. Also, note that the parameters of GNN at different time steps are shared, and we could stack multiple layers of GNN to mine their deep hidden relationship. Due to our work is in submission, I'm sorry I cannot give more details about our model. Additionally, we also implement a LSTM-based method as a baseline. Here, the input is only the data of agent vehicle, and we use exactly the same data preprocessing methods as before. Here comes the result part. We train our model on training set and validate on the VAL set. The train VAL split is done by the official code. We select the model at the best epoch on the VAL set to uplo upload results. To show the effectiveness of the data preprocessing methods, we do ablation study for them. Specifically, we do not use the proposed preprocessing methods and only use zero score normalization, which is standard in the machine learning field. As we can see from the results here, we can draw the following conclusions. First, the data preprocessing methods are significant. As we can see from the LSTM based method without our proposed preprocessing methods, their test performance on both regular track and the generalizability track become much worse. Second, 
we find that using JN could better fit the training scenarios. As we can see, on the regular track, where test data is from the same scenarios as training data, the JN plus RNN achieve similar ADE with LSTM, but much better FDE than LSTM. However, we find that using GNN makes it hard to transfer to unseen scenarios. As we can see on the generalizability track, track GNN plus RNN's performance is worse than LSTM-based method. As for the reason why using GNN makes it worse, we speculate that the coordinate skills factor for LSTM is 2.90 and for GN plus RNN is 31.64. This means that GN plus RNN has a much larger map and a much complicated input space, which makes the model easier to overfit the scenarios instead of learning the pattern of trajectory. On the contrary, LSTM-based method only has the agent's trajectory in one second, which is less likely to overfit. Additionally, we also think that large coordinate skill factor means that when the neural network makes a small mistake, it will be amplified by the coordinate skill factor, since we need to let the output of model time the factor to generate the raw coordinate. The ADEFD would be amplified more in GN plus RN than LSTM based method. That's all. Thanks. If you have any further questions, please feel free to contact me in email. Thank you. Okay. Congratulations to Xiao Songjia from Shanghai Jiao Tong University to achieve such a good performances on our challenge. And it's also great to see he can incorporate the relational reasoning and temporal information with the GNN plus RNN structures. So uh, for, for what he mentioned for the generali generalizability track, actually it's just a beta version with several new scenarios we provided. So that's why we didn't include that in, in this uh, workshop announcement. So next uh, is the second place winner of this challenge, who is uh, Yao Feng Sun from uh, Peking University. So he will present how to combine the bird eye view uh, picture into the prediction with the ResNet as well as the GRU and MBM based models. Hello everyone, my name is Yao Feng. I'm a student from Peking University. It's my pleasure to share my solution to the interpret challenge in this workshop. My topic is combine bird view picture into prediction. And I would like to give a video recorded presentation of my work. This challenge provides the historical information of the Eagle vehicle and the surrounding vehicles. Information includes the position, handling, and velocity in the past 10 frames, and also the width and length of each vehicle. Here is the screenshot of the dataset. Our goal is to predict the position of the Eagle vehicle in the future 30 frames, namely 3 seconds. Here is my model architecture. I utilized the generated bird view picture and the historical trajectory of the Eagle car's inputs. I will explain the bird view picture later. In general, this picture provides a straightforward feeling of the spatial relationships between cars, and it is easy to convert the raw data into the bird view picture. A common approach to encode images is using a pre-trained signal model. Here I use the ResNet. As for the historical trajectory, because it's a sequence, so I use an RN to encode it. 
Then I fuse these two sources of inputs, go through several fully connected layers. In the end, I use the mixture density networks to output the distribution of the displacements in each future frame. The bird view picture is rendered with picture size 64 times 64, and the actual size of the field of the view is 40 meters times 40 meters. The picture's background color is black. Then I draw some red points to mark the historical trajectory of the Eagle vehicle, and draw some green points to mark the surrounding vehicles. Note that the center of the picture is the start point of the Eagle vehicle, just for calibrating different cases. Also, I use gradient colors to depict the historical trajectories. I didn't add information of the road geometry because the data pre processing is a little bit difficult. I think it could be future work. The advantage of the bird view picture is that when the number of the surrounding vehicles is varying, it is difficult to transfer the information into a tensor with a fixed shape, which should be the input to the neural network. And the bird view picture can handle any number of the surrounding vehicles, just putting them into a single picture. Also, the bird view picture could provide clear and natural spatial relationships between cars. Here are some bird view picture examples from different scenarios like intersection, roundabout, and merging. The bird view picture is powerful. However, it can provide the absolute information of the position and the velocity. For example, we can speculate the accurate speed of the car just from the pixels. So I use an RN to encode the relative position of the eagle car in each frame. This challenge also allows us to submit up to 50 possible trajectories. So I use the mixture density networks to generate varying trajectories. Specifically, in each frame, I use MDN to get pi x, mu x, and sigma x to represent distributions of the displacement. So we can sample trajectories from these distributions. And the training loss is negative log likelihood. I also use a tree called multitask and fine tuning for training model. That is, first, I mix up the data from different scenarios and train a single model supposed to provide good initial parameters. Then I fine tune this model for each scenario. The advantage is that some scenarios only have a small amount of data, but the data from other similar scenarios are also helpful. So we can use the data from other scenarios to improve the performance of the scenario with few data. Also, more diversified data can make the model more robust. By mixing the data, we can get a model with better generalization ability. I have tried three methods. The baseline is RNN plus MDN, and then I add the CNN of the Burview picture and the multitask trick. We can see that the bird view picture helps a lot. And also, a huge and diversified data set is really important for deep learning. By now, the third model, CNN plus RNN plus MDN plus multitask, achieves the highest MON score. For future work, as I said, I can refine the bird view picture, for example, adding the information of the road geometry. Also, I haven't tried data augmentation and model ensemble. I believe it would be helpful. That's all. Thanks for listening.